Hey guys, I'm Steven, and welcome to the fifth and final episode of the Atlas Arm Prosthetic Hand Project. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I got from the last version to this one. This is the final version of the Atlas Arm, aside from some minor tweaks. Some of the main things that are different about this from the last version is that it uses a DC motor instead of a servo. It also has a built-in screen and joystick for controlling the hand. The screen actually shows a little operating system that I programmed, which you can navigate with the joystick. You can go into the threshold menu and change your EEPROM settings for thresholds like how hard you have to squeeze your muscle in order to get the hand to open or close. There's also a hand select menu which lets you change what mode you want to use for the hand. So in here there's pulse and hold, which is pulse once to close the hand and pulse again to open it, or hold it as long as you want the hand to be closed. But there's an option to program a bunch of other functions into this menu. And most notably, it's actually built for an amputee with a 3D printed socket based on a scan I took of the amputee's remaining forearm. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how it was built. So here it is working. All right, so some of the specs on this thing. So this whole thing is running on a Arduino Nano. It's also got a DC motor driver board from uh, Pololu. It's the VNH5019 board from Pololu. And this board is awesome because it actually has a pin for current feedback, so I can monitor how much current is going through the motor at any given time. So I actually have a pin loop in here controlling how hard it's squeezing uh, based on how much current is running through the motor. So if the amputee wants to pick up something really gently, uh, they can send that command to the microcontroller and it knows how much current is going through the motor and how hard the hand is squeezing. So it can pick things up very gently and only put a little bit of current through the motor, or it can grab a lot harder and really crank as much current through it as it can. It's also got the standard EMG board that I've been using for this project from Advancer Technologies. So like I said before, this version I built in conjunction with an APT. So in order to make it fit him perfectly, I decided to take a 3D scan of his remaining forearm and then use that model to print a rubber socket out of NinjaFlex that would perfectly fit him. Right after I cleaned up the mesh, I pretty much exported the STL and printed it out, and this is what I got. Now this ended up being way too big. When he put it on, it was kind of like dangling off a little bit. It's huge in comparison to how big his remaining forearm is. This took a really long time to print too. Uh, it's a lot of NinjaFlex, but this thing is borderline indestructible. It's really, really, really strong. So I tried again and scaled this model down about 85% and added a bunch of holes. And then this is what I got. There are three reasons why I decided to add holes. First of all, for breathability. Second of all, to help him kind of guide his amputation into the socket a little easier. And also to make it a little more stretchy, so I can make it a little smaller and a little tighter and it'll stretch and kind of grip on. And when I saw him, uh, this fit pretty darn well, but it was a little loose in some places and a little tight in some places. So I marked where it was loose and where it was tight and went back and made up a new one. And then that third and final iteration is the one that's actually built into the hand. Right now I just have the battery in there for demos just to kind of keep it out of the way. Another thing that I added to this version was a standardized pinout for the hitch between the hand and the forearm. And what this means is you can develop any kind of hand or something that would go on the end of the forearm and this pinout will support most functions. And that means you can build pretty much anything and pop it into the standard adapter and you have functionality. All you need to do is update the firmware so it controls it properly. So for example, Example, the amputee that I'm working with, he likes to work on the audio equipment in his car. So he likes to solder a lot, but that's really difficult with the claw that he currently has. So I'm going to make him an attachment that plugs into that interface and lets him solder. It'll grab two wires and hold them in the right place, and then it'll actually extrude solder at that joint when he squeezes his muscle. And then his other hand is free for using the soldering iron. But having this kind of standard adapter where you can pretty much make the thing on the end of your forearm do anything you want is really useful for specific applications of a prosthesis. Another one that I've been throwing around the idea of building is one that holds a pencil. 
but when you squeeze your muscle, the whole pencil could rotate and goes out around to an eraser, and then the user could erase. So there's a whole bunch of different functions that you could put on the end of a forearm using a standard hitch with a lot of different useful pins coming out of that. So when I was working on designing the forearm, I tried a lot of different things and printed out a lot of parts that had no real use at all, but gave me a good idea of what I did need to do in order to make something useful. When I was pretty sure I was close to the design that I liked, I just tried printing out a version of it to see how it actually worked with installing the electronics. And this is one of the first tests that I did. This is the top part of the forearm, the bottom part that interfaces with the socket, I just cut off to save plastic because that wasn't what I was testing with this. And you can see I kind of hacked some of it apart on this side because I didn't design it properly, but that was really great for me to know exactly where I needed things to be recessed or where I needed support for different parts. And that's what's so great about being able to just 3D print something and find out. So these gave me a lot of insight about what I liked about my design and what I didn't like about it. And you can see on the top, there's a hitch that I designed for interfacing with different hands. So I've gone through a lot of different versions of how the hand should actually be designed and how it should open and close and what makes the fingers return back open. Like you guys saw in the very first one, it was just dental bands on the back of fingers and I was pulling it with hemp cord, that old green one. And then in the last version, I had the whole hand be NinjaFlex, which was good for some reasons, but also for others, it was not very useful or practical. It took a really long time to print and it also wasn't very strong and the NinjaFlex joints could tear pretty easily. I knew I needed to have a complete redesign. What spurred on the idea that I ultimately pursued was seeing James Bruton from X Robots using a, a Lulzbot with a Flexi Dually Struder which can print both rigid and flexible materials in the same print. I thought this was so unbelievably cool when I saw it and I thought it would work really well for making hands or fingers where the flexible part would be the joint and then the rigid part would be the bones. So given that I have a Taz, I decided it would be a really good investment to buy one of these FlexiDuel extruders. So I pulled the trigger on it. And then I started going through and designing fingers with this new ability to print in flexible and rigid material together. And one of my first tests was this. This is a finger that has living hinges built into it. This was all printed in one part. I've got a little bit of fishing line going through it just to demonstrate. But this is printed all in one part. It popped off the bed like this. Uh, the black parts are ABS plastic and then the red parts are uh, NinjaFlex. So what this allows me to do is have an incredibly strong finger component that's printed all together. The two plastics are fused together just like each normal layer is in a 3D print. And it also has the inclination to reopen when no force is being applied on the string, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So after I decided that that was the route I wanted to take, I decided to move up from one finger to a whole hand. And then all of that resulted in this, which has all of these angles the exact way that I want them, pulling in at the right time, meeting up at the same place every time. Also a nice feature about this is that all of the fingers are removable. I printed the palm in place with all of the five joints coming directly off of the palm as one piece, and then each finger was printed from this joint up, all in one piece. The first knuckle actually feeds into the finger component, and then you tighten it down with a heat set insert and a screw to kind of clamp down on the NinjaFlex and hold each finger in place. This means if you break a finger or you want to change the color of it or whatever, it's really easy to just unscrew, pop out a finger, pop in a new one, and tighten it back down. And last but not least, of course, there's a jack on the backside to plug in the EMG sensor. There are so many people that have helped me get to this point in this project including uh, Melissa Berkey from the UConn Idea Grant Program, Caroline McGuire from Undergraduate Research. They've both been a tremendous amount of help. Uh, Adam Wentworth and Anson Ma, my two advisors for this project. All of the amputees that I've spoken with or taken 3D scans of or gave me any insight about what they're looking for in medical device in any way. I so appreciate your input along with all the prosthetists that have spoken with me about this as well. They've given me tremendous insight about how to design this thing. And of course, Ross Gates for inspiring me to do this to begin with. If you have any questions about why I did this the way that I did, or comments about how I could make it better, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. All right, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching.